Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. Uh, in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to set up this simple little helicopter here. So before we go ahead and do that, I just wanted to show you guys exactly what it will look like when we're done. So obviously you'll have this helicopter and you can walk up to it. And if you press F while you're next to it, you'll get in and then you can press F again and you can get out. And then if you hold down W, it will start uh, turning on the helicopter and the blades will start to turn. And then once they start spinning fast enough, you'll start generating lift. And then you can use the mouse to pitch the helicopter and to turn the helicopter as well. And this is just a pretty simple example. I mean, it is kind of complex just because helicopters are kind of complex, but it's not any, you know, type of military simulation style of helicopter physics going on here. It's just very gamey and, um, but it definitely, you know, works for a simple example. And then of course, you know, you can kind of get out and get back in. And yeah, oh, and one other thing that's kind of cool that I'll be doing is if you actually look at the character inside of it, he's actually sitting inside. So I just created a little animation for him. So I'll be showing you guys how to do all of that in this tutorial. So I'm gonna drag this guy over here and drag this guy over here. So this is actually a different project and it's based off the third person tutorial. And it's I haven't made any changes to it other than I just copied this map over, which just has some little cubes in it or whatever to, re to represent buildings. But other than that, um, you'll see if I drag in my little character guy and I press play. Oops, I need to set it up to auto possess him. So let me just click on him real quick and set him to auto possess and I press play. You can see this is just the third person um, template. I haven't made any changes. I don't want you guys thinking that I made changes when uh, I haven't. It's just a totally empty project other than I just imported this map. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and let's import our helicopter. So in the link of this, or in the description of this video, there will be a link to a folder that looks something like this. I have a bunch of FBX files for the helicopter itself and then some textures. So let's go ahead and import these real quick. So I'm gonna come back here to the content directory and I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm just gonna call it assets and we're gonna put all of the helicopter assets in here. So let's go inside of here and then back in this folder, grab just the FBX files and drag and drop them into this folder. And then when this window pops up, we wanna actually change a couple of things. We want to change the import rotation by negative 90 on the z-axis. And I'll show you why we're doing that here uh, once they get imported. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to change the material import method to do not create material. And we want to uncheck texture import. And we're doing this because we have our textures inside of this folder and we're going to be importing them separately. So once you have those things set, just go ahead and press import all. And it should import uh, seven different static meshes here. So these static meshes all are gonna make up our helicopter. You can see we have the main body, we have the rotor, we have the blades. And we also have two static meshes here that end with blur. And basically what these are for is once the blades start spinning fast enough, we're actually gonna swap out the blades for a different model that has a blurred texture applied to it. So it'll make it look like the blades are spinning really fast. That's kind of just a little trick to do it. And it really helps, especially if you're running out a lower frame rate. But anyways, the next thing we need to do is import our textures. So I'm gonna right click and make a new folder and I'm just gonna call it textures. And if we hop inside of here and then come back to our folder and go to textures, we can drag all of these guys over here and it will import them. So one thing we need to do real fast is for our mask textures, which are these ones right here, the occlusion ones and the ones that end in occlusion, we want to double click on these and change the compression setting to mask. Uh, this is just something you need to do whenever you're working with a texture that's meant to be used as a mask. So we'll do that for that one and then we'll do it for this one as well. Set it to mask and save. And then now we can go ahead and create our materials. And we're going to end up creating four different materials. We're going to have one for the body of the helicopter, one for the glass of the helicopter, and then one for each of the different blur textures. So to start with, let's just right click and create a new material right here. And we'll just call this M underscore body. And this will be for the body of the helicopter. And if we double click on this, 
and kind of make it its own window here. We can actually just drag these textures in. So I'm gonna take the little bird main body base color, normal, and then this occlusion roughness metallic and drag all three of these in. And I'm gonna make the window a little bigger here. So essentially all we wanna do is just hook these eyes up. So the base color one goes into base color. The normal one goes into normals. And then this one goes into, the red goes into occlusion, ambient occlusion. The green goes into roughness. And the blue goes into metallic. And you'll see since we set this guy to a mask, this texture to a mask, you'll see it automatically changes the sampler type to a mask over here for us. Uh, if you didn't do that and you try to set this to mask, it's going to give you an error. So make sure you have that correct. And let's do file save all and hit apply. And we can close this guy. We don't need it anymore. And then we want to do the same thing for the glass. So I'm going to make a new material again. Call it M underscore heli glass. I should probably call this one the heli body for helicopter. Heli body. So in this glass one, again, let's open this up and kind of make it its new little window here. And for this one, we want to drag in the glass textures. So the ones that have glass in them, drag those three in. And then we're going to do pretty much the same thing here. We're going to make one small change since it's glass, though. So we're going to hook this up to the base color. We're going to hook this up to the normal. And then the, the red goes into the ambient occlusion. The green goes into the roughness. And the blue goes into the metallic. And then we want to have some transparency to this since it's glass and you can see right now it just kind of looks like a chrome ball and to do that we need to change the blend mode over here on the left so make sure you have this selected and then come over here on the left where it says blend mode change this to translucent and then we want to set the opacity to the a value of the base color texture and you'll see that will get us pretty close um, but it doesn't quite look like glass yet because it doesn't really look shiny it's just completely see-through if you want to give it some shine, you can come down here to the lighting mode and switch it to surface translucency volume. And if you watch over here, it will enable some pins as soon as I do this. So you can see it enabled the metallic and the roughness pins, which we're making use of. So now if we apply and save this again, it will update. And you'll see that it looks a little bit more like glass now. Kind of takes it a second sometimes. All right, there we go. So now you can see it has kind of a reflection on it. And it looks like uh, looks more like glass. All right, so we can close this one. We're done with that one. And then we need two more. Uh, these are going to be a lot simpler. So for these, we can actually just right click. So select the main rotor blur, right click, and say create material. I'm going to call it M underscore rotor blur. And then inside of here, we want to change, again, we want to change the blend mode to translucent. And we want to set the opacity to the A value. And we can hit apply and save this. And I'll show you guys exactly what these materials are for later once we go to use it. But for now, just set this up and close it. And then we just need one more for the tail. So do the same thing with the tail rotor blur. We're going to create a material called tail rotor blur. And again, we want to change it to translucent and hook the A up to opacity, and then hit apply, and save. And I'm just gonna do a save all real quick, just cause I like to do that. All right, so now we have all of our materials for our helicopter set up. So we can come back to our assets folder, and we wanna apply those materials to the correct static meshes. So for the main body, if we open this guy up, the main body, we're going to apply the body texture too, so M underscore Healy body, just like that. And you can see it still doesn't texture the glass and that's because it wants the glass texture. So we're gonna do M underscore um, Heli glass and that will texture the glass part of it like so. So this one's done, so we can close that. Next one is the main rotor. So let's open this guy up. This one's just gonna take the Heli body, Heli body and you can see it textures it correctly. Let's save this. And by the way, feel free to use this helicopter in your project. Um, there's no like fees or anything you need to pay. You can use it for free. Um, the main rotor blade, we're gonna apply the heli body again, like so. It looks good. Save and close that. 
All right, so now we have the main rotor blade blur. So this one, as you can see, is basically just a disc. And we're going to replace the blades with this static mesh once they start spinning really fast. And then you'll see once we apply this blur texture to it, so if you type blur, make sure you do the rotor blur, not the tail rotor blur. You'll see it kind of looks like the blades if they were spinning really fast. And if you imagine this spinning, then it really gives the illusion that it's actually just spinning really fast and it's creating a blur on the screen because it's so fast. So that's the one we want for this guy. And then the rear rotor, we just want the body. So M underscore Healy body. And the rear rotor blades, we want the Healy body again. And then finally for the tail rotor blade blur, we wanna use that tail rotor blur. And you can see likewise, oh, yeah, you can see likewise it has the blur effect. And one thing I just noticed, if we come to this side of it, you can't see it. And that's because we need to set it to two-sided. <clears throat> so I forgot to do that real quick. So let's go back to these textures. So for the blur ones, we want to be able to see them from both sides. So if you open up the M underscore rotor blur, we want to check this checkbox right here for two-sided. And again, that'll just make it so we can see it from both sides. And then we can hit apply and save. And then we want to do the same thing for the tail rotor blur. So make sure you do that as well. Select two-sided and apply and save and save all. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of close these right now because we don't really need them open at this moment. So now we have our helicopter assets fully imported and we can go ahead and start creating the helicopter blueprint. So let's go ahead and right click and select blueprint class. And we want to use the pawn for this because we're going to be possessing this helicopter. It's more than just an actor. It's something we're going to possess and take control of and fly. So we want to select pawn. Let's call this BP underscore helicopter. And we can open this up for editing by double clicking on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do before we write any code is we're going to set up our helicopter because the helicopter is made up of a bunch of different pieces and we need to kind of add them all together here and attach them to the correct spots and that type of stuff. So the first thing we wanna do is come up here to the top. We wanna to add a static mesh for the body of the helicopter. So type static mesh and select that guy. And then on the right here in the details panel, we wanna select our main body. So select the main body and there you go. It populates it with our main body. Obviously we're missing the rotors and the blades. So that's what we're gonna add next. So with the static mesh selected up here, do add static mesh again. And what that will do is it'll make it so that this static mesh is a child of this static mesh. So it's attached to it basically. And let's actually rename these. You can press F2 to rename. So I'm gonna rename this one to body. And I'm gonna rename this one to blades. Just so we can kinda, actually this is the, um, this is gonna be the rotor. Just so we can kinda visualize what we're doing here. And then we want to change the static mesh over here to the rotor, the main rotor. But you can see by default, it attaches it to the origin, which we don't want. We want the rotor attached up here on this little stick that sticks out the top. And to do that, we can use the sockets that are part of the static mesh. So if you actually click on the static mesh and you go back to the static mesh viewer, you can see it has two sockets already applied to it. It has the main root, which is up here or sorry, the main rotor socket, which is up here. And on the tail, it has the tail rotor socket. And you can also view them down here. So we can actually use these and say, hey, attach to these specific sockets. So back in our helicopter, if we click on our rotor and right here above where we set the static mesh, there's an option for the parent socket. We can search and we say, we wanna attach this to the main rotor. And just like that, it will snap to that socket. And then next we need to attach the blades. So add static, or add component again and search for static mesh. Oh, and it's popping up as static mesh and then parentheses, it says main body. And that's because we have the main body selected. Um, it kind of does that as like a thing, but it's actually kind of annoying. So just come back and make sure you unselect this and then go back and select rotor again and say static mesh and then select. And then it adds an empty static mesh, which is what we want. We'll call this the blades. And for the static mesh, we will just wanna use the blade, so main rotor blade, and it will pop those into the correct spot because it's a child of the rotor. And then next we need to set up the tail rotor. So coming back to the body, because we want it attached to the body, we'll select that and we'll say add component. 
we'll search for our static mesh. And this is going to be the rear rotor. And we will attach this to, or we'll set the static mesh to uh, rear rotor. And we want to attach the socket to, or we want to attach it to the tail rotor socket. Um, and then one thing I noticed about this model, it's actually slightly incorrect, but you can see it's actually not attaching in the correct direction. It's rotated 90 degrees uh, off, because ideally it should be, don't actually do this, but ideally it should be rotated this way, uh, this way, where it sticks in. Um, but currently it's rotated this way. And we could just rotate it like this, but a much better thing to do is just fix the socket. So if we come back here to the main body, and we go to our tail rotor back here, and if we select it down here, it will select it. And then we just want to rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm just going to take it and rotate it 90 degrees so that X is facing forward, Z is facing up, and Y is facing to the right. And then once we have that, save it. And then back here, if we detach it and reattach it to the tail rotor again, you'll see it pops it into the correct spot. All right, so now that we have that situated, we can add the blades to the tail rotor. So add one more static mesh, and this is the last static mesh we're going to need. And this is going to be renamed to the rear blade, or blades, I guess. And we'll set it to our um, rear rotor blade. This is what we want. And there you go. So now our helicopter is totally set up. And if we were to drag it into the world, you'll see that it looks pretty good. Looks like a helicopter so far. But obviously, we can't walk up to it and get in it yet because there's no functionality associated with it. So that's what we're going to be working on in part two of this video. So I'll see you in part two.